Okay, let's make a, a start then. So, um, Yukari uh, will, will talk to us about the McKay uh, correspondence. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I'd like to thank the organizers to give me a chance to talk here. It's a very good opportunity to see me, many people here, but uh, normally it's a midnight in Japan, so it's very difficult to, for me to attend. Anyway, uh, I'm very happy to be here. So today I want to talk about the McCoy correspondence. And uh, my abstract is very abstract. And uh, today I want to introduce the original McCoy correspondence and also some uh, survey of recent works. And also I want to show you some open problems later. Okay, so I Next page. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, yeah. The original market correspondence is a following. So, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. So, when uh, J is a finite subgroup of SL32C, then there are the five type A and D and E6, E7, E8. Then we can consider the reducible representation of G and just put a number there from zero to K and uh, it's not a dot, it should be comma. And uh, it is a normal reducible representation. And uh, on the other side, so we have, we can consider the quotient space X, uh, C2 over G it has isolated hypersurface singularity. It is very known fact, but please keep in mind this one because it's very important fact in dimension two. And for this singularity, we have the minimal resolution and let's call the exceptional curves EI and EI uh, uh, exceptional locus. And uh, just put the name I is from one to K. Then the original Makai correspondence, it's very rough Makai correspondence, but the Makai correspondence is a one-to-one -one correspondence between non-irreducible representations and uh, irreducible exceptional curves. So it is a Makai correspondence. It is a very beginning part and we can consider the several um, things. But it was not a um, uh, correspondence between root G and the hypersurface singularity at the origin. That means the following. So John Mackay observed the following fact in 1979. And he is a representation theorist and he considered the irreducible representation of G, low I, and natural representation of G. And he computed the tensor product low I and low. Then it is, it is a direct, it should be a direct summand, but I'm sorry if I use a sigma here, but we can get AIJ as a coefficient of low J. Then, this AIJ can be a matrix. So if you forget IJ equals zero part, just, it means just to uh, omit or you know, trivial representations, then you can get a uh, matrix AIJ and two, I, two identity matrix N times, uh, sorry, K times K matrix and minus AIJ is Carlton matrix. So Carter matrix is very special matrix, which gives linking diagrams. Then uh, his observation is uh, between finite group and simple real algebra, because simple real uh, to classify, sorry, not simple. Um, uh, Carter matrix is a tool to classify simple real algebra. So it is a word of representation theory. But on the other hand, we have a quotient singularity as before, sorry. 
So here we have a quotient singularity and there is a minimal resolution. And if you consider the, uh, uh, the exceptional locus, then we will get some a set of curves and there is a number of curves and we can get a intersection matrix of these curves. Then nowadays we call Mackay correspondence is defined by Gonzalez, Spinberg, and Verde in 1983. So for the minimal resolution y to x and the exceptional curves EI, the exception locus is a set of exception curves. And there is a numerical correspondence between intersection matrix of exceptional curves and Carlton matrix. It's just as opposite. But it is just a numerical correspondence and just a number puzzle. But later, Gonzalez, Binberg, and Verdier proved the frame. So let uh, Ri be a vector bundle of Y. It is a very special vector bundle, so called the tautological bundle. And it corresponds to the each uh, representation of G. Then the following geometry correspondence holds means the first chunk class of the total vector bundle times EJ is a uh, uh, chronic that chronic delta. Means there is a one to one correspondence, geometrical one to one correspondence between representation and uh, exception divisors. This is called Mackay correspondence by Gonzalez Spinberg and Verde in their paper past. And uh, it, it was written in French, so they call it La correspondence to Mackay. But uh, anyway, it is the first time to show the Mackay correspondence in object geometry. Then there are several generalization after this, because it's a very interesting correspondence between representation of a group and the resolution of the singularities. Then there are many generalization was considered in dimension two at that time. So this is a several, there are several generalization in dimension two and Gonzalez, Binberg, and Verdier for, uh, showed other uh, uh, showed Mackay correspondence first, as I told you before. And later in 1985, Artin and Verdier use a reflexive module on X, then they show a more uh, categorical represent, uh, correspondence between. Uh, group and uh, resolution of singularities. And later, Eno and Burnham and other people consider the generalization to a more general sing uh, quotient singularity for finite subgroup of G in GR2C. Then they consider the special representations. So, the number of the uh, reducible representation is larger than the number of the exceptional divisors in general, in, if G is in GL2C. But they consider the part of the reducible representations, so-called special irreducible representation. And uh, it, they are, all of them correspond to the each exceptional curve. Then I, in some paper, I told, I call this uh, correspondence special Mackay correspondence, but it's not a special case. It is a general case, so it's not a good naming. I th I thought, but uh, uh, nowadays many people call it special Mackay correspondence. Anyway, it is a one-to-one -one correspondence between special irreducible representation and uh, exception curves. But if you consider the situation in SL2C, then if every 
and non reducible representation is special in their definition. So there is a one generalization in dimension two to general linear finite subgroups. So it is a one generalization, but later we want to consider the more high dimensional case. So what happened in dimension three? So it is when uh, the two dimensional case was done in 1980s. And at that time in object geometry, the classification of three folds is very popular. And on the other side in physics, the string super string theory is became popular in 1985 and later. Then there is a good timing to consider three-dimensional generalization. So when we want to consider three-dimensional generalization of Mackay correspondence, you can take G as the final subgroup of SLCC. It is just a generalization of two dimension case. And you can consider the quotient space C3 over G. And it has a canonical, but not terminal singularity. Then there is a classification of terminal singularity at that time, but there is no classification of canonical singularities. And it's a new, a kind of new member in adjunct geometry. And uh, people want to know about the Caravia singularities and the Caravia manifolds at that time. And it is, the X has a trivial chemical bundle, then it is a kind of a Caravia uh, singularity. And as I told you, in dimension two, the quotient sheets by G, G in SL2C has a uh, isolated hypersurface singularities. But in this case, most of them are non-isolated and non-complete intersection singularities. So if it is a hypersurface, then it is easy to get um, resolution of singularity by blowing up using defining equations. But in this case, it's very difficult to find the good resolution of singularities. And also the situation of the singularity is very complicated because it's not isolated in, in many cases. And uh, after blowing up, the situation became more and more uh, complex. But there was a conjecture by Hiritzberg and Heffer in 1990. And it, it was the, the paper was written in 1919, but uh, the problem is comes from a uh, super string theory. And uh, their conjecture is the following. So for X, the quotient C3 over G, and G is a finite subgroup of SLCC, then the uh, canonical bundle of X is trivial. Then there exists a crepant resolution pi. And uh, they want, if it is a crepant, then the canonical bundle of Y is also trivial. And that tri top, uh, topological Euler number of the resolution it should be the number of conjecture class of G. So it is a conjecture by Hitler and Heffer. And, but the number here, total with a number is a mathematics, but in string theory, the, they consider all hold Euler characteristic. They, their notation is something like this. And by their definition of in, in this situation, the all hold Euler characteristic is same as the number of conjecture class of G. Then this means uh, the in string theory, they consider some, some uh, invariant in physics, but uh, it is just same as the 
mathematical number, topological Euler number in this sense, if, if conjecture is true. Then uh, many people try to consider this problem. And uh, also uh, there was a classification of finance subgroup of S uh, SL3C at that time. Then uh, after it takes 10 years, but uh, this conjecture was proved as follows. So it was the existence of Crepant resolution in dimension three. And this was done by Mark, Mark Shevich, Ron, and I. And uh, it takes about 10 years. And uh, also, there are uh, eight papers to prove this theorem. The conjecture was proved by for any finance subgroup of SLCC by construction of equivalent resolution by using classification of finite subgroup of SLCC. And the beginning, so that in around 1986, that at the beginning, Markovich and Rohan proved the exist equivalent resolution using toric geometry, because if G is a barium, then the quotient space is toric variety. And they, you can use the toric geometry to consider Crepant resolution. And they showed how to use, how to make a Crepant resolution and the compute topological Euler number also. Then after that, Maxevich and Doan computed hypersurface case. It, there are, they consider only two, two cases. Maxevich considered uh, hypersurface and it is a quotient by a simple group of order 168. And also Rohan consider another hypersurface case, which is a quotient space by a simple group of order 60. And the two simple group is uh, all, all simple groups in SSAC. And both of them are hypersurface and you can blow up the using defining equation and you can get the Crepan resolution. Now, after that, there are very, very, uh, some time, long time. And uh, then I consider the tree header case. I told you later about what is the tree header case, but uh, it is a kind of a three major version of dihedral groups. And uh, you can use a uh, toric geometry uh, partially. Then we can get the Crepan resolution. And after that, so we already proved for simple singularities, uh, simple groups. Then uh, we have uh, some other groups has an uh, Amerian subgroups. Then we can consider toric geometry uh, uh, step by step and uh, we can get the uh, uh, Crepant resolution finite. Then we can get Crepant resolution for any finite subgroup of SHCC. But there are one, there are one another uh, things. So, so I want to show you some example of the Crepant resolution if G is a variant. So if G is a variant, as I told you, X is a toric variety. And the food corresponding con, so the toric variety is defined by con, and the con is a positive con in R3. And the toric Crepant resolution can be given by a triangulation of a triangle delta with vertices, uh, it's a basis of the Z3 and uh, the inner point of N. So N is a very special lattice point, and Z3 plus one hours A, B, C, D. And this fraction number is uh, corresponding to a uh, group element of G. And this is a, if G, you, you can go to the diagonalization, also a diagonal matrix of G. Then there is, a, if E is a earth root of one, then there is a A, B, C number here. Then you can correspond to the number our hours A, B, C. And this lattice point and the, 
and uh, these three uh, bases are uh, generate the lattice n. And in this lattice point, we can consider the Crepant resolution. So now I want to show you one example. So it is a uh, cyclic group of order six and generated by matrices. It is an original type and it epsilon is a six root of one. Then we have the one, six, one, two, three point here. But in general, so we used to at the beginning, we should consider cone sigma and cone sigma is a uh, this one. So it was generated by uh, three vertices. And uh, also this is a cone and we have to consider the subdivision of this cone. But if you want to consider the Crepant resolution, you can see just this yellow part. This yellow part is uh, this one, this triangle. And on this triangle, there is a several point which is defined by the lattice N. And in this case, there are four points here. So now to get Crepant resolution, you should just subdivide, triangulate of this yellow triangle using these points. So there are several possibilities to subdivide this triangle and it corresponds to uh, um, each Crepant resolution. So in dimension two, we have only one minimal resolution, but in dimension three, if you consider Crepant resolution in general, there are several Crepant resolutions for one singularity. Then let's try to consider the subdivision of this triangle. So in this case, there are five Crepant resolutions, I think. And there are many cases. So you can subdivide like that first, then you can flop this curve, then you can get this one. And also you can flop this curve and you can get this one. And by flopping curve, you can get every Crepant resolutions. And it is uh, all cases of the Crepant resolution for one, six, one, two, three case. And please remember the shape. There are several cases and also it's um, connected by flops. So uh, to show the theorem before, you can just um, construct one of them because in dimension three, the topological Euler number is um, invariant under birational equivalence. Then after flopping, you can get same number of triangles inside in yellow triangles. So in this case, we have uh, six triangles and also we have a six triangle inside. And this number is just a uh, Euler number, topological Euler number. Then if you get one Crepant resolution, you can check uh, Euler num topological Euler number. And in this case, it is the number of conjugacy class is the same as the number of the order of the group, then it is six. So you can see the uh, theorem is true. Conjecture is true. So after that, the construction is complicated and we have a good tool, so-called G Hilbert scheme. So the definition of G Hilbert scheme is the following. So it is a set of G invariant idea in the um, polynomial ring and the quotient by the IDR is equal to the group ring. And uh, it is a very simple, looks simple, but uh, what it is. 
So if you consider n equal to, so two dimensional case, it is, oh, sorry, it is a minimal resolution of C2 over G for G in SL, uh, GL2C. So <clears throat> it is uh, proved by uh, Nakamura and myself for SL3, SL2C case and the Kido approved for cyclic group case and uh, Akira Ishii approved for any general group, uh, general final subgroup of JR2C. So it was done around 1997. And uh, it is a two-dimensional case. And in, if you consider three-dimensional case, then it was a Krepan resolution of C3 over G for G in SL3C. So it was proved by Nakamura for Abelian case and Rich and King and Reed proved for general groups. It was done around 2000. And Bridge and King did proved, wrote a paper, so-called the first title of the paper was Mukai implies Makai, means Makai correspondence can be uh, explained by uh, Fourier Makai transformation, means uh, a correspondence is a derived equivalence they showed. So uh, nowadays it was known that uh, they co consider some special Macrepan resolution, so called G Hilbert scheme, to prove this theorem. But nowadays you can see the similar thing for any Macrepan resolution. Then, but what is G Hilbert scheme? So we considered the one example of order six before, and we have five Crepant resolutions, and uh, all of them are connected by flops. But G Hilbert scheme is one of them by definition. And this one is G Hilbert scheme. So it is the most uh, symmetric subdivision. And the other things are not uh, uh, G Hilbert scheme. But uh, it's a very special Crepant uh, resolution. But I want to say more about G Hilbert scheme more. So, so G Hilbert scheme is a modular space. So I defined G Hilbert scheme as a set of ideas, but it is a modular space of G clusters. But it is more almost the same as before, and where G is a G invariant subscheme of CN, such as blah, blah, blah. And uh, it is uh, almost similar to the uh, previous definition. But as a modular space, you can consider more different way. And uh, it is uh, isomorphic to M theta QR. And where Q is Mach equivalent and R is a relation. And uh, theta is there generated. Then it is a uh, one uh, different definition of G Hilbert scheme. Using this definition, there was a conjecture by Clo and C. And uh, for finite subgroup of SLCC, for all projective crop and resolution is isomorphic to M theta, where M theta is some GIT stability parameter. So if theta is zero, zero generated, then M theta is a modular uh, G Hilbert scheme, but they consider all projective clip onto resolution. Then they proved for Abelian case. So the conjecture is true for Abelian subgroup of SL3C. But other cases are still open. So for this G Hilbert scheme is also uh, very convenient to consider uh, more geometric correspondence between representation and exceptional 
locus. So he was called Lidot Lesbi. So when G is abelian finite subgroup of SLCC, so there is a recipe for geometric correspondence, so-called Lidot's recipe. It was written in Lidot and Globe. And this is a correspondence between non-trivial irreducible representations of G and exceptional divisors and exceptional curves. It is not one-to-one -one correspondence, but it's a kind of, of a correspondence between two things. And if you consider the case one, six, one, two, three, so we have a G here. here. So G here scheme is this subdivision. And I put the number. So each number corresponds to each representation or character of G. Then one, two, three, four, it correspond to, uh, correspond to uh, exceptional curves. <laughs> and five is corresponding to exceptional divisor here. So in this case, only one divisor. So we have a kind of correspondence between non-trivial irreducible representation and exceptional divisor and curves. So it is very uh, good example, and we can do similar things for any financial group of SLCC if G is abelian. But if G is not abelian, it's very difficult to consider because we have we can say G Hilbert scheme is a correspond resolution, but it is difficult to see uh, what kind of shape of the G Hilbert scheme in general if G is non-abelian. So if G is abelian, then you can use such a uh, picture because it is toric, you can use toric geometry. So now we want to consider some problem after this. So we call it, I call it next steps. So there are two problems. It's very abstract problem. So problem one is non-abelian cases. So if it is abelian, then you can use toric geometry and very, we can imagine what kind of resolution we can get and so on, so on. And, uh, uh, but if G is non-abelian, it's very difficult to see the structure of the resolution. But later I will introduce iterated G Hilbert scheme is, is so-called Hilbert here. And it's done by Ishii and Nora Desaris and myself. And uh, it is a kind of the construction of the Crepant resolution using toric geometry for non-Navian groups. And, and, uh, and uh, there is another problem for high dimension case. So nowadays it is known. So if, if there exists a Crepant resolution, then there exists a uh, derived equivalence, derived Mackay correspondence in general, so in any dimension. But we don't know when we can have Crepant resolution. So the existence of a Crepant resolution is a problem. And around 2005, Dice Hank Ziegler considered four dimensional Gorenstein uh, very unfortunate singularity. So they take several examples and they consider the existence of Crepant resolution in toric geometry in dimension four. And recently, Kohei Sato and Yusuke Sato considered high dimensional Crepant resolutions using Fujiki Oka resolution. I don't explain what is Fujiki Oka resolution, but they con Fujiki and Oka consider the resolution for dimension two and higher, but uh, they didn't consider a Crepant resolution at that time. But nowadays, you 
you can consider a crepant resolution uh, to show the existence of a crepant resolution using uh, Fujiki Oka resolution. So it is very good things. And, uh, but uh, most of uh, it's a part of the singularities, quotient singularities. So it's very difficult, but we can, we, are, we will have a several problem in high dimension. And also we can consider uh, uh, several things. And uh, I introduced the scheme, but if you consider the Hebrew scheme in dimension four, then sometimes Transition, but sometimes they are singular and sometimes they are smooth but not crepant. Several things if we consider the here scheme. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. So I want to introduce either the here scheme, so called here above here. The theorem done by 2013. So if G in a group, if G has abelian normal group, then uh, G over N of modular space of M theta means uh, from the construction, this is the crepant resolution, and also. N help C3 is modular space, and the G help of this space is modular space. But this is a modular space, modular space. But we showed the modular space of modular space. This modular space of modular space as morphic modular space. Then we get prepant resolution here above here, which is uh, different from J in general. Constructing case, so construction, non-groups, construct the Arian case, we have a J here, here, but uh, there are another case. So in this case, we can construct the two types for as a quotient. So uh, this is uh, D2 here means you can consider the D3 here. So this red part and this part, then you can get three triangles by resolution of uh, cyclic group of order three. After that, you can apply act on Act the D two action, then then you can get it two triangles subdivisions for each triangle. You can get six. This is the this this. There are so these three here of the two here. So you can divide it by two first, and then act three. Uh, cyclic group C of the order three. Then you have a different prepant resolution here. So D here is here, and uh, another here above here is here. So you can imagine so that here above here is different from G here, but you can get more other resolutions, prepant resolutions in general. So it is a abelian case, so you can imagine. You can compute everything by the triangulation of the triangle, but in general, it's very difficult to do what kind of exist. But you can add their remaining thing. So in this sense, so I told you there is a conjecture by Crow EC, and so there is a one some project of equivalent resolution here. Uh, and we should consider the remaining part. And also, if G is a simple group, you cannot consider this concept. So it's very difficult. So now 
I want to consider the uh, several next step. So I, as I told you, so the non-abelian case is um, difficult to see, but uh, we can consider the help of help and also some construction of equipment resolution using toric geometry. So now I'm considering the reader's lips before non-abelian is Ben and he's in Washington. And uh, at this moment, it's just a set of examples. So I want to show you one example here. But it's a very beautiful example. So if you consider the tree header group, so I, as I told you, this is a kind of three dimensional diheader group because it is a di um, diagonal matrix and some. Um, matrix, such kind of matrix as a generator. So here we have the seventh root of one and uh, take normal subgroup N is uh, generated by this group. Then it is order seven um, group. And if you use uh, Redo's recipe for this group, this is Abelian, so you can compute everything and there are the three divisors which correspond to row three, row five, row six. And there are several curves, but there are three types. So this is correspond to the uh, order uh, no, 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 uh, representation one. And this is correspond to two. And these curves correspond to four. So we have uh, three different curves and uh, three different representation the three different uh, curves. So there are six representation if it is in gen, um, order seven cycle group. But we should consider this three here group. So in G, so if it is Abelian, then there are all representation is one dimension. But in G, G is not Abelian. Then there are two three-dimensional representations and also three one-dimensional representations. And one of one-dimensional representation is trivial representation. And in G, so maybe you can consider the action of Z3. D3 action is generated by this one. Then three divisors coincide after the action of order three cyclic question. And also each curve is uh, coincide with one to go to one exceptional curve here in the, in the quotient. Then there are one exceptional curve which comes from this one and one exceptional divisor which comes from this one. And each correspond to three dimensional representations. But also there are two other non trivial representations and they are correspond to two exceptional curves. So which was given, uh, obtained from the action of G3 by this quotient. Then each uh, representation correspond to each divisor or curves and so on. So. So it is a one example, but I think, I hope uh, there is a similar read of the, we can consider the kind of read of this before non abelian quotient, but it's on, way, on my way, way. So, so maybe I speak a little bit faster. So that's all my talk. And uh, finally, I want to show you one announcement from my institute. So there are several problems which I told you as before. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. so we have several problems for non bilian case and high dimension case in Mackay correspondence. And I want to consider more and more. And I want to have more people to consider these problem, but we need many computations. So nowadays 
we are looking for postdoctoral fellows, fellows in IPMU. So IPMU is a institute for the physics and mathematics of the universe. So we have a mathematician, also the physicist and the astrophysicist. But now we are uh, looking for the postdoc of from next year for three years. So the deadline is this simple first. So maybe if you are interested in this position, please apply this. And uh, this is in Japan and uh, also um, belong to the University of Tokyo. But the cover IBM is not in Tokyo. It's in a Chiba prefecture. It's one hour from Tokyo station. And also it around the it's not in downtown, so very safety place from COVID-19 also. And also uh, our uh, common language is English. So if you want to come to Japan or want to do uh, research on correspondence, please apply here. And also there are another uh, many adjunct geometers here. So I hope you can apply to here. If you want to do mathematics in adjunct geometry and also do, you can speak English here. Okay, thank you very much. So if, if you want the interest in, in here, you can take photo here. Anyway, thank you very much. I will stop my talk here. So please ask any questions if you want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuka. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. What about a high dimensional case, like four, four, four dimensional case? So high dimensional case, what about? So we can, we can, we should find the uh, formula or condition to exist Clipant resolution. This is a more, more serious problem, I think. And also you can consider the construction of the Clipant resolution in high dimension is much more complicated. So, but even in Abelian case, all of them are not known. So you should consider more cases, yeah. And also we can find some condition of existence. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, well, um, thanks, uh, Yukar. Thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to add that IPMU is a beautiful institute. Strongly yeah. recommend everyone. Yeah, yeah. To, I would like to stack on Fania in this. Every my every visit I made to IPMU was a pleasure. So <laughs> anybody who's you. considering a postdoc should uh, apply for this postdocs there. So I, I suggest to advertise this among uh, young uh, people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Because deadline yeah. is basically in one week. Yeah, one week, 10 days. 10 days, 10 days, yeah. yeah. Maybe you should write a recommendation yeah. later also. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye, Sione. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you for coming. Bye. Thanks for this talk. Yeah. Thank you.